maybe it's just my algorithm, but I am seeing a lot of people wanting to quit their jobs, move into a new profession, a new career, or just not wanting to work at all. But everyone needs to understand that they are already operating in their natural God-given gift based on their birthday. And I wanted to kind of take you guys through some careers that are seen through, again, your birthday alignment. I know some people are working jobs that they don't feel like this is me. And that is why they want to move out of it because they have forced us out of alignment, made us feel like we have to do this thing in order for you to be successful. And that is not the case, y'all. As somebody who quit their job because I did not feel like I was in alignment, although there are qualities, of course, of teaching. I love teaching. I was a teacher, a public school teacher, but my natural gift that is like my core, I was not in alignment. So what I wanted to do was kind of go through people's birthdays, the numbers, if you add up to a one, a two, a three, all the way to nine, and then kind of tell you the kind of general energies that are seen through these birthdays because... You want to operate in your gift. You want to operate in your natural alignment. Now, will everyone get their dream job, their dream career? You know, probably not. But you can use the gifts within your birthday, those talents in that job that you are doing to kind of feel more fulfilled. Like if you are in a job where you're like, I do not need to be at the bottom of the totem pole, you probably have that energy of being a leader. So you need to kind of climb to the top in order for you to feel like you are in natural alignment. So what I'm going to do, of course, add up your birthday, you know, to a single digit. So if you're a 22, you know, if you're born on the 22nd, add up to a four. If you're born on the 13th, it adds up to a four, you know, so on and so forth. Get that single digit and then you will understand what planet rules over you whenever it comes to your job, your career. Okay. So if you are born under that one energy, that sun energy, you're born under that Leo type of energy, the first, the 10th, the 19th, the 28th, you could be somebody who is um, in like maybe the political field, the political spectrum, because fifth house is the sun is Leo energy. And it does rule over the politics type of, you know, part of society. So you can be somebody who's maybe a government worker, a policy maker, maybe you work in city council or something like that. You can be somebody who's maybe a leader of a large organization because Leo, the sun, they like to be the center of attention. They don't want to be in the background. So you can be at the forefront of an organization, a leader of an organization. Um, you can also be maybe some type of project manager. Again, somebody who is at the top. Um, maybe you have your own business. You're an entrepreneur. You don't like to be told what to do. You are the king, you know, the king of your castle, the king of your business. So you can be somebody who is an entrepreneur. You can be somebody who also is like a teacher, like a yoga teacher, a coach. Again, when you are in that teacher energy, that sun energy, everyone is looking at you for um, direction. So again, you don't have to be, again, an entrepreneur, but you can be a leader um, you know, people who are, let's say, personal trainers, they can embody that type of energy because Leo is also a fire sign. It's also um, athletic. So you can be somebody who's maybe a personal trainer. You can be something like that. You can also be somebody who is maybe into sales or media because the fifth house is the house of theater. It's the house of speculative gains. So things like sales are also seen through there too. So you can be somebody who is, um, you know, dealing with that industry, or you can be somebody who is into advertising and promotions, maybe on the uh, commercial scale. Again, theater and acting is seen through that fifth house, that sun, that Leo type of energy. So again, if you are um, born on the first, the 10th, the 19th, or the 28th, those are the kind of things and the industries that you can um, be a part of whenever it comes to your job or your career. If you are born under that two energy, the second, the 11th, the, um, ooh, why is my mind going blank? It adds up to a two, y'all, the 20th as well. My mind just kind of went blank. But if you were born under those days, you were born under that moon type of energy. Moon energy is like cancer energy. It can be um, people who are into uh, fields of psychiatry, psychology, therapists, counselors, because moon is like motherly energy. You know, you go to your mom for your problems, um, you know, for that nurturing type of um you know, uh, you, you have a nurturing type of nature. You can also be somebody who is a nurse, somebody who's a caregiver. Maybe you take care of, of older people. Maybe you are, again, just a nurse. You want to help and heal people. You know, moms, when the child gets sick, they're always running to them, making them soup and things like that. If you have the typical stereotypical mom, um, they can be somebody who really wants to nurture and take care of you. So a lot of times medical doctors are seen through this 
because they want to help and heal people. Um, maybe again, maybe in just the areas of psychiatry as well, just want to listen to you, want to hear you out. Um, people who are maybe pharmacists, again, helping and healing. The moon wants to heal and help people. Also, because the moon is water energy, you can be somebody who is in a water-related field. Maybe you work out at sea. Maybe you're a marine biologist. Maybe you work on a cruise ship. You can also be seen um, working in those type of industries as well. Um, because the moon is also, again, very like creative. I, I do know people who um, operate better under the moon or like creating under the moon you can be somebody who's maybe an artist a musician um, a dancer somebody who's sculpting painting all those kind of things because moon is also creativity i do know somebody who paints they make sure they paint at nighttime because it just i don't know it's just something about them and their connection to the moon that helps them feel like more artistic um, during that time that nighttime you can also be somebody who's maybe in human resources as well, because when you have complaints about your job, you go to HR and now, you know, maybe they're not as nurturing as caregiving, but they are people who will listen to your problems in the workplace and kind of help you deal with those kind of things. So again, moon energy, um, that two energy, those are the kind of fields that you can be in. If you are born under that three energy, that Jupiter type of energy, so if your birthday adds up to a three, you are born under that Sagittarius or Pisces type of energy. You can be somebody who get who goes into fields of education as Jupiter is the guru. Jupiter is the teacher. So fields of education, if you're a professor, um, I was born under that three energy and I wanted to be a college professor. I obviously didn't know why, but I have a lot of Sagittarius in my chart. And so I did want to be a college professor obviously became a public school teacher for many, many years. So you can be a teacher, be a guide, be a coach, be a spiritual advisor, <laughs> be somebody who is a religious guru, a teacher, a, um, a preacher, a minister, those kind of things, because Jupiter is um, Sagittarius energy, Pisces energy. Those are the spiritual houses of astrology. So you can go into those type of fields. If that is the type of field I'm in, you can also be somebody who's maybe a professional like marriage counselor, people who like to kind of bring those people together, kind of go through, um, because Sagittarius does go into like deeper knowledge, philosophy, religion, um, connecting all kinds of people. You can be somebody, again, who just likes to listen to people. It's a more philosophical type of nature. Pisces energy or Jupiter energy is that healer type of energy as well. People who have um, Jupiter or Sagittarius placements can attract people who need a lot of healing. So obviously I do talk to clients who kind of go through a lot of things and I help them through all kinds of situations too. You can be people who are also into like professional sports. A Sagittarius is a fire sign. Fire signs are very like go, go, go. They can be very athletic. So you can be somebody who's an athlete. You can be somebody who's uh, maybe, like I said, a project manager. Fire signs are like to... I want to say initiate things. Um, you know, Aries is more of the cardinal sign, but Sagittarius, those fire signs, they're very go-getter type. They can also be people who are into content creation, advertising, media. Sagittarius is marketing. Now, I have been known to be, um, you know, very into marketing. That's what I went to school for. I wanted to be in sales or some type of social media content creation, something, because I was like, I have an eye for this. I know what to do whenever it comes to the people. I know what the people want. So you can be somebody who goes into those kind of things as well. You can be people who are, um, be people who are also maybe into interior design, writers, architects. I do know a Pisces son who wanted to be an interior designer is Pisces is a very creative sign. Pisces is the 12th house of astrology. Again, people who um, have Pisces energy can be people who are cr very creative musicians and things like that. It can be seen having Pisces placements. So you can go into those type of fields as well. Public relations as well. Event organizers. Now, I do have a degree in public relations. I am somebody who has a lot of Sagittarius in my chart and also born on that three days. So if I can use myself as an example in tying to career, you naturally gravitate towards those things. You can also be somebody who wants to be maybe a lawyer or a judge as Sagittarius rules over the ninth house of philosophy, your morals, your values, your belief systems, the law. During COVID, I wanted to be a lawyer. I was like, we got a lot of time on our hands. I wanna change careers. I know how to argue. I'm an Aquarius son. It's a communication sign. I just like all those energies. I bought the book. It's right above me, the LSAT book. I was like, I can be a lawyer. <laughs> 
easy. So those kind of things you can get into as well. So if you are, again, born under that three energy, you can embody a lot of teacher energy, the Sagittarius, the Pisces energy. So whenever it comes to your career fields, just kind of think of the gifts that you have been given being born under that three energy. If you are born under the four energy, you're born on the fourth, you're born under the, the 13th, the 22nd, um, you can't, and the 31st, you can be somebody who's born under that, um, I'll say Aquarius energy, Rahu North Node energy, and Vedic astrology, Uranus type of energy. So it does tie to Aquarian type of themes. It can be themes of computer science. It can be themes of uh, programming as um, AI type of stuff as Uranus or Rahu does connect to technology, the futuristic type of thing. So you can be maybe into coding, you may be a, a video game programmer, software developer, those kind of things can be related to any kind of business or ideas that are related to technology, to the future, to what I'm looking at right now, computers, people who help repair computers, um, things like that too. Anyone who deals with, let's say, like the uh, medical equipment, um, you know, people who sell type of like maybe like radio technology whenever it comes to hospitals and things like that, you can be seen through that too. You can also be somebody who is into fame, into wanting to be an actor, wanting to be a TV star, wanting to be a celebrity that is also seen through there too as Aquarius energy or Rahu or North Node energy can be associated with the 11th house of you know, other people. It's also connected to the fifth house, which is, again, the celebrities that act in the theater as well. Rahu wants fame, wants celebrity, wants like look at me type of thing. You can also be people who are into, let's say, photography or any kind of like camera work as well, as that does tie to, of course, like celebrityism. But again, it's technology as well. It's also just very artsy, very creative too. Um, being a lawyer, like I said, that Aquarius energy it's all about facts. It's all about communication, y'all. And it's all about the future. Like you just know, you just know things. And so you can be really good at law at communicating those kind of things as well. You can also be really good at dealing with people um, of foreign culture as Rahu is like foreign, connecting to foreign things, foreign people, foreign ideas, you know, importing and exporting goods, things like that. That is also seen through this energy. So if you are born under that four energy, that Aquarius energy, that technology, technology, um, AI, those kind of things are seen within your job, your careers, your field that you can gravitate towards. If you are born under the five energy, so born on the fifth, born on the 14th, born on the 23rd, you can be somebody who is under that Mercurian energy, Mercury, which is like Gemini Virgo type of energy. So it's all about the mind. It's all about maybe accounting, maybe finance, economics, the numbers, as Virgo energy, I'll say Virgo energy, let's start there. Virgo, Mercurian energy is very analytical. Like they are looking at everything. They're looking at numbers. They're working really hard. They like to scan for imperfection. So you need people who have that analytical mindset to look at things, especially numbers, because the last thing you want is somebody to get your money wrong. So if you need somebody to deal with money, maybe you could gravitate towards somebody who has Gemini, Virgo type of energy. So you could be really good at auditing, because it does take an eye for those kind of things. I am somebody who has a lot of fire energy. I'm skimming over. I'm not like looking at the details, but somebody who has that Mercurian energy can be into those kind of things. You can also be into banking, investment, anything that has to do with money and finances, because again, it takes an accurate eye to look at those kind of things. Anybody who is also like a risk taker, because Gemini likes to, um, you know, learn about everything. You can be somebody who's very into, let's say, trying out a bunch of new things, starting a lot of business ideas that can also be seen through there as well. Um, you can also be somebody who's a medical doctor because Virgo does rule over the sixth house of your health. So people who have Virgo placements, Mercury, you know, heavy Virgo can like to help and heal people um, that can also be seen through there as well. Lawyers also too, because the sixth house is the house of your open enemies, any kind of lit legal litigations can also be seen through that sixth house, that Mercury energy, that Virgo energy. Is this making sense, y'all? Um, so if you have a Mercury energy, 
you probably have Gemini, you probably have Virgo and connect those houses together. That can also be a thing too. People who also are into traveling or tours, transportation, as Mercury rules over Gemini and Gemini rules over the sixth house of astrology that has to do with that short distance traveling. So you can maybe be somebody who is a truck driver. Maybe you are into um, wanting to be a pilot, wanting to be um, somebody who <laughs> operates submarines. I don't know, but somebody who operates transportation, those kind of things can can also be seen through there. Also, an astrologer or a numerologist, it takes an analytical mindset to kind of do this work because you're studying charts. You are looking at everything. You are looking at numbers. So if you are inclined to those kind of things, that can also be a thing too for you. Now, also, um, any kind of fields of communication, because again, Mercury is Gemini energy and Gemini rules over the third house of communication. Mercury is a sign of communication. So you can be into writing, journalism, social media, any kind of public speaking that is also seen through that five energy. If you are born under the six, so being born on the six, the 15th, the 24th, you can be somebody who is inclined to Venusian type of theme. So Venus rules over Taurus and Libra. So anything that has to do with like glamour or the beauty industry, movie stars, fame, Hollywood, those kind of things can be seen through there. If you're a makeup artist, maybe a jewelry designer, maybe a fashion designer, maybe a stylist. Again, themes of beauty can be seen through there too. Any, even if you're in business um, as the person who is um, operating the business, because Libra is a cardinal sign and cardinal signs usually like to start businesses. Maybe you have a jewelry business um, or a beauty product business. That can also be a thing too. Maybe you like to, um, you know, act or sing or, you know, have some kind of like dance type of um, energy about you. Maybe you want to be an actual dancer. Maybe you want to be a singer, a, an artist, a sculptor. That is also, again, Venusian type of themes. Now, Libra... Um, is like gravitates towards like man-made type of beauty. So again, makeup, art, painting, um, and then Taurus um, energy is like natural beauty, like um, mountains and actual nature, no makeup. <laughs> that can also be a thing too. Maybe you can be into um, wanting to be like a cosmetic surgeon, a cosmetic doctor, somebody who does change people's faces, an esthetician that has to do with the beauty, the skin, even gynecology as well. You can be inclined to those kind of things too. You can also be inclined to maybe being a lawyer because Libra does rule over the seventh house of marriage, maybe a divorce lawyer. The seventh house of marriage, of litigation, of legal bindings between people, that is Venus type of energy. You can also, like I said, be into hospitality because Libra energy is the seventh house of like the public. So maybe you want to be into, you know, just helping people in the industry of events and things like that, of wanting to be of service of some kind of way. If you are born under that seven energy, this is um, K2, the South Node. It is a Neptunian type of energy. So born on the seventh, born on the 16th, born on the 25th. You can be somebody who is inclined to, let's say, maybe spiritual things. You can be um, a spiritual advisor, maybe somebody who is religious as Neptunian type of energy or K2 type of energy does tie to the spiritual aspect of um, astrology. Um, you can also be somebody who's maybe into tarot, somebody who's a yoga teacher, because that is also spirituality as well. Oh, my hair. Um, you can also be somebody who maybe just is a natural peacemaker, some kind of arbitrator, um, some kind of uh, negotiator or mediator. You can also be um, seen through that too. You can also be somebody because it's like a secretive energy. People who are born under the seven energy can be people who like to keep things to themselves. They don't like to tell people about their business. Um, so you can be somebody who is a natural like secret service agent because you know how to hold information. You can be a private investigator. You can go through um, themes of like research and technology in the career fields that you have. You can be people who are into like, let's say the medical field, surgery, um, you know, it's helper healer energy. I'm um, having this maybe anesthesia because Neptune energy or seven energy ties to the 12th house of the subconscious. And I had, and this is a side note, I had a discussion about this, like who invented anesthesia? Like who had the knowledge to know what needs to be created in order to shut down a part of the brain that doesn't feel pain and time? You wake up from surgery, if any of you have ever had surgery, like you wake up, you have no idea how much time has passed. You're just like, what the heck? It's like going to sleep. Like how was that even created? Like my mind is still boggled about that, y'all. But anyways, you can also be people who go into fields like foreign language, foreign studies, maybe an interpreter or a translator as well. 
So if you are um, inclined to those kind of careers and you have that seven type of energy, and that's why it makes sense, y'all. If you are born under that eight energy, that is Saturnian type of energy, that's Capricorn Aquarius type of energy. So born on the 8th, born on the 17th, born on the 26th, you are under that Saturnian type of energy. I just had a client who was born under this energy, born on the 26th. So you can go into fields that have to do with business. Now, I did ask her, I was like, and this is for all eight people. I know y'all do this. So when you go into businesses, because you have natural energy to like, you would just have a natural business sense. You can go into somebody's business and if it's not being run right, an eight person is always like, if I was in charge, I would do this, 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 and this. They're always trying to correct how businesses should operate. So you could go into business as Capricorn is a cardinal sign. And again, cardinal signs tend to start businesses. You can also go into a humanitarian type of causes. Um, eight energy, like I said, is also Aquarius. And Aquarius does rule over the 11th house of humanitarian issues, groups, large organizations. You can also be somebody who can be, again, inclined to being a lawyer or a judge because eight energy is rule following. They will follow the rules. It is law and order. You can also go into themes of like, just like construction or petroleum or chemicals. That is Capricorn type of energy. I've known that Capricorns like to build things. They like Legos. They like to um, be like construction workers. I have somebody who actually lives in my building who is a Capricorn. Again, that's eight energy who is in construction, who is also a real estate agent who also I asked him because he had no understanding of astrology, but I was like, do you like to build things? And he was like, oh my gosh, my favorite thing growing up was my Lego set. Again, y'all, we are naturally given these gifts so you can go into those kind of fields. You can also, like I said, deal with stones, geologists, minerals, those kind of things as well. Um, you can also just have general office work because like I said, it's eight energy is very disciplined. It's very like by the book, you know, so you can go into office work, dealing with paperwork, dealing with, like I said, businessy type of things that maybe other people find boring, but you actually like those kind of things. If you are born under that nine energy, you're born on the ninth, you're born on the 18th, you're born on the 27th, you can be somebody who is inclined to Martian type of things. Now, Mars is the god of war. Mars is aggressive. Mars is fighting. Mars is high energy. So you can go into the military, the armed forces, any Navy, Army. Um, I do know a lot of people in my family who it's, I come from a military family on both sides. It's kind of it's kind of interesting to understand when you understand yourself, you understand the energy that you're given born under that military type of structure. You can be going to those kind of things as well. You can go into competitive sports because Mars rules over Aries and also Scorpio. But Aries energy is very competitive. Aries is the athlete. Aries is a fire sign. So you can go into competitive sports. You can maybe be a personal trainer, fitness trainer, fitness industry in general. You can go into, let's say, things of like mechanical engineering, computer engineering, Mars. Again, Mars is the fighter. Mars is aggressive. Mars is physical. Mars is going to go and get what it needs. So maybe you could be, um, because it's like Scorpio energy as well, you can go into the medical field, let's say in surgery, because it likes to dig. It likes to find the truth. It likes to find things that are hidden. Um, you can also be, let's say, into food into restaurants or into being an owner, business owner. Because like I said, Aries is a cardinal sign and cardinal signs like to start things. You can also be into real estate. I have seen Mars is real estate. Um, people who have, let's say, and this is off track, but like if you're in your birth chart, you got Mars in the fourth house, you can be somebody who really wants a home. So Mars, real estate, home business, um, any kind of like, let's say hotel management, anything that has to do with um shelter i would say something like that too so you can also be seen um as somebody who like i said can be a, a real estate agent as well but overall this is kind of a this is kind of a general energy of numerology tying to your careers and things like that so if you like a more in-depth analysis if you're still confused and you're like well i hear you but I still don't know what you're talking about. Of course, I do do one-on-one -on -one consultations with my clients, especially talking about career. As somebody who has had a bazillion careers, I don't want to say careers, I've had a lot of jobs, I would say that. But again, understanding my birth chart is understanding why I had to go through a series of different types of jobs. I can totally <laughs> help you relate to that. So you can go ahead and go to my website. 
you can go ahead and follow me on any social media platform. I have all kind of content on all kind of platforms, y'all. So just find me somewhere, y'all. Just Google my name and I promise you, you will see me there. Thank you all so much for supporting and commenting and liking and watching and all of that. And I will talk to you guys soon on the next video. Let me know what y'all want to see next.